Let's do a calculation involving the photoelectric effect, ejected photoelectrons and photons of a certain energy hitting a metal. We'll take the question, what wavelength of radiation must be used to eject electrons with a velocity given from chromium metal with a work function that's given? So this work function for chromium metal, 4.37 electron volts, is how strongly chromium holds on to its electrons. So we have to say, well, what is the photoelectric effect? The photoelectric effect, we have to balance the energies. Remember, the photoelectric effect has the kinetic energy of the electron is the photon energy minus the work function for the metal. So the metal holds on to the electron, but if we bring in a high enough energy photon, we can eject an electron with a certain kinetic energy. So that's what we have to find. Let's look at what wavelength will work for this problem. And what we'll do is we'll balance the energies involved with a common unit. And the units we always use are kilograms, meters, seconds, and joules, the SI units. Now, we do that to keep all the things we multiply together consistent unit-wise. We're dimensionally consistent. We always use kilograms for mass. So don't just put your masses into your equations with grams or pounds or some random mass unit. If you come across a mass, convert it to the kilograms. If you come across a distance, a length, convert that to meters. A time, seconds. An energy, joules. That'll keep your, energies con your units consistent and allow you to do the calculations correctly. So again, the kinetic energy of the electron is the energy of the photon minus the work function of the metal. We can calculate the kinetic energy of the electron. We're going to have to look up its mass and use the velocity that we've been given. So we'll use kilograms for its mass, meters for the length, per second for the velocity. Meters per second squared. Mass, velocity squared. That's going to be an energy, a kinetic energy. So this will be joules. In fact, that's how I remember the SI units of joules. I remember kinetic energy is a joule. And Kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared, so it's kilogram meter squared per second squared. So this has been pretty straightforward. We'll look up the mass of an electron, express it in kilograms, express our velocity, was given in kilometers per second, but I'm going to convert it to meters per second to keep the units the same. Square that, that's relatively straightforward, 11.16 joules times 10 to the minus 19. Tiny, tiny, tiny number of joules. Of course, it's an electron. So with that kinetic energy, we can continue to balance our energy. We know the kinetic energy is 11.16 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. The work function we've been given, that's 4.37 electron volts. Now, electron volts in a, a unit of energy. It's the kinetic energy that an electron gains as you accelerate it across a potential of 1 volt. We don't have to know that, but it is nice to know that I can convert joules to electron volts with a simple conversion factor I can look up in any textbook. 1.61 times 10 to the 19, minus 19th joules per electron volt. So we can do that product. So the work function in terms of joules, 7.04 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. So We'll rearrange now and solve for the energy of the photon. The energy of the photon is the kinetic energy of the electron plus the work function. That has to equal 11.16 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. And we're going to add on that work function, 7.04 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. We can express the photon energy in terms of its wavelength as well as its frequency. And that has to equal the sum of these two, or 18.20 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. Of course, we can solve for the wavelength now. That's just hc over 18.20 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. And we can do that math. This number, plug in Planck's constant and the speed of light in joules per second and meters per second. And then we'll notice that the units of joules will cancel out and the units of seconds will cancel out and leave us units of meters. And that's what we want. It's always good to check. Do the units that we have left makes sense for the quantity that we're solving for. We're solving for wavelength, a length. Do I have meters? In this case, I do. So 
I have, doing the math, 109 times 10 to the minus 19th meters, excuse me, 109 times 10 to the minus 9th meters, that's a nanometer. 109 nanometers is, as we recall, in the UV, the ultraviolet region. We know visible went from 700 down to 400 nanometers. Below 400 nanometers, at higher energy, are the ultraviolet photons. So an ultraviolet photon is required to eject an electron from chromium metal.